All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just want to make sure everyone's awake for this very special occasion. I'm State Senator Lina Gonzalez, very proud to represent the 33rd Senate District, including my wonderful hometown of Long Beach. I want to thank everyone for being here for this exciting moment. As we've often talked about, last year was unprecedented. It was challenging and very trying, but at least we have some light at the end of the tunnel with this great celebration. Today, we will present checks on behalf of the state of California. Many um, folks in the legislature, our pro tem, Tony Atkins, and our governor also supporting $14.5 million to the city of Long Beach and our local organizations, Centro Cha and TCC Family Health and many community organizations that advocated for these improvements. This summer, the state legislature passed a historic $262.6 billion budget, historic unprecedented, with record financial commitments to small business, healthcare, education, childcare, and of course, one of my favorites, broadband. And in collaboration with many advocates joining me here today, I successfully helped secure state discretionary funds for projects in central Long Beach, including $1 million in capital support for the new TCC Family Health and Wellness Site here in Cambodia Town. Yes. I want to thank Dr. Elise Nicholas and all the members at TCC for their immense contributions to equitable access to health care in the city of Long Beach and beyond. TCC Family Health is a long-standing Long Beach institution that provides high quality and affordable health care to our underserved communities, and we are so excited and proud for this clinic. We also secured $5 million for an inclusive business and workforce development center operated by Centro Cha. I'd like to recognize Jessica Quintana and the whole Centro Cha team, a well-known champion for Latino and communities of color and immigrant communities locally. Central Cha, as we know, has a track record for being a bold leader in community-based workforce development programs and does so much incredible work for our youth and for our community, and we thank you. Finally, we are proud to announce, I know, the list keeps going on, $8.5 million for MacArthur Park rehabilitation right here in the heart of Long Beach, Central Long Beach. MacArthur Park, as we know, is an essential community space for Cambodia Town with the Homeland Cultural Center and the Gamboa Theater. This park hosts programming that is critically important to the community. Thank you so much to Brent Dennis, our new uh, Parks and Rec Director and Marine Department, for and as well for the City of Long Beach for highlighting this, but most importantly for the many organizations, the many organizations who pushed and advocated to ensure this actually fell through. AOC7. We have Mary Simmons here, Rocio, so many from AOC7, Friends of MacArthur Park, Cambodia Town Inc., Khmer Parents Association, UCC, Midtown Business Improvement District, Midtown Neighborhood Association, Mr. Charles Song, Mr. Wayne Cheney, City Fabric, Los Angeles Land Neighborhood Land Trust, we have Sunny Central as well, and many organizations who came through to ensure this was prioritized. You know, when um, the Senate asked me to put together a list, we went through the district and asked all of our city officials to put this list together with us. And I had no idea that the list would be completely 100% uh, implemented, both in Southeast Los Angeles and here in City of Long Beach, in places that need it the most. And I am so very proud and thankful for that. And thank. Thanks to all of you for being here. So with that, I'd like to turn to my friend, introduce our mayor, Robert Garcia, to provide additional remarks. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to, I just want to just start by, um, by just saying that I am, I, I tell her all the time, but I am so glad that Lena Gonzalez is our state senator. I'm so glad that she is our, our state senator. And I think today is a good example of her work in Sacramento. Uh, we are grateful in Long Beach to have great representation. And especially grateful today that the state is making such a historic and important investment in central Long Beach. Now we know that uh, particularly 90813, this community uh, has needed so many resources and additional support. 
I see a lot of neighbors here from the community, which is great to see. I see a lot of uh, advocates and community leaders. So thank you from our Latino community, Cambodian community, just all across the city. I see some educators here, uh, folks uh, that are also involved in workforce development. Just thank you all for your being here. And what I'm really excited about is the funding that's being provided by the state uh, is significant. If you can imagine, just for MacArthur Park alone, and I've been following along, particularly with AOC7 and all, and all the, the workshops and the community uh, uh, charrettes you've had to redevelop the park, and to think that this amount of resources is gonna allow you to rebuild and create an incredibly special place is really, really important. And we're very, very grateful to the state senator for, for that support. And of course, to uh, the, the, the resources coming in for the children's clinic, amazing. And the resources coming in to Centro Cha, incredible. To, to, and you've all seen the, the, the drawings for this center that I know Jessica has been talking about for years. And so this would not be possible without Senator Gonzalez's leadership and support. I also just want to add that we know that what's being really talked about today are special projects for this community. But Senator Gonzalez has led on a variety of other state projects that we may not be talking about today, but are really important. She's led efforts to ensure that more people in our state get health coverage. She's led efforts to ensure that we're cleaning up the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. She voted to ensure that in this very own zip code, that later this year we're gonna launch a guaranteed income program where we're gonna give 500 single moms resources every month, $500 a month, over the span of a year to help them bridge the pandemic, which will cover, by the way, many moms that are living at the poverty line. She also supported that at, in her work in the legislature. So there's a lot happening in the central part of the city and it's because of folks like State Senator Gonzalez uh, and the person I'm going to introduce uh, that we are here to celebrate. With that, I want to introduce someone that already hit the ground running, is a great champion for the neighborhood, is doing a great job on the city council, uh, and I know, fortunately for the neighborhood, has a great relationship also with our senator, and that is Dr. Suli Sarr. Let's give her a big round of applause and welcome her. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I also just want to say how lucky not only we are to have the senator, but an amazing mayor whose incredible leadership has really helped us navigate and manage through this pandemic and ongoing pandemic. Um, you know, when the senator called me to inform me about this great news, all I could do was be silent for a moment and I was moved to tears. I just my eyes welled up because this area, this 90813 area has been neglected for so long. And to have our state representative say, yes, we're getting you 14.5 million from the state and you know, injecting it into this area that's needed um, just means so, not only so much to me, but all of you that are here today and many of the people that the senator has thanked, who's been a fighter and an advocate, not just for the area, but the people who live here, to empower everyone to continue to advocate to make it a better place for all of us. So thank you so much, Senator, for your leadership and your advocacy for helping District 6 receive the much needed important project, uh, the funds for this, all these important projects in the central area which has had a high need for housing, healthcare, park and green space improvements and business and workforce development. You know, this area within this one mile area of MacArthur Park, it makes up about 17% 17 of Long Beach population, making it one of the most densely populated area in the city. So it's been long overdue that we're able, think, thanks to all of the groups who were able to create the vision plan to be able to, um, now be able to put that into life and just so grateful for the Senator's support. In addition to her support to making sure TCC has the funding to build the health and wellness site where we're gonna get 88 units affordable supportive housing through Bridge Housing. 
and also supporting Central Cha so that we have this inclusive business and workforce development center. Much needed in this time as we're recovering from the pandemic and where everyone um, is certainly needing support as we get back on our feet. So I just can't thank the senator and also with the mayor's support in ensuring that we have this guaranteed income pilot program that's going to complement the investment projects. And we also are going to have some amazing upcoming projects to improve the Anaheim corridor that will complement nicely to the development projects as well as other investment in recovery. So I'm just so appreciative of all of this amazing investment so that we really can forward the six together with everyone. So with that said, I have the privilege of introducing Jessica Quintana, the Executive Director for Central Cha. Ms. Quintana is a longtime resident with over 25 years of community and public service. Um, there isn't anyone that doesn't know her if you've done community work, right? So I don't have to say much about her except that she has done tremendous work to impact and change the lives of improving low-income Latinx and overall Long Beach uh, community members. Please welcome uh, Ms. Quintana. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Central Cha, we just also want to thank Senator Gonzalez for her historical investment uh, to the organization and to the Central Long Beach um, through the investment of the state funds, the 33rd District. Um, we also want to thank um, the city of Long Beach, who's been a champion and a partner uh, with this, having this public-private partnership um, you know, the first actually um, within the Latino community here. So we're just very thankful and grateful for our partnership, um, understanding that we are, through this $5 million funding, that we are building a business inclusive center to address some of the economic and equity gaps for a lot of our low income entrepreneurs, for folks who need to grow their business, um, really trying to recover during this, during the pandemic, creating a space for training uh, we will have a training kitchen, uh, workshops, state-of-the-art technology centers so we can really address the gaps in technology for our underserved uh, communities. I don't know if some of you folks had the opportunity to look at some of our renderings, but we also want to thank Studio 111 um, for their partnership in, in helping the organization to design some of the renderings of the, the development project that's going to be on Atlantic Avenue. Um, all this, you know, it's, it, this didn't happen overnight. This has been over 20 years of discussion and needs and talks and advocacy on behalf of the Latino community here in the city. Um, and so, you know, this is, we're just so grateful that we finally have a champion at the state level who cares about our city, who cares about the Senate district to really fight and make those investments here locally. We're very proud of our city councilwoman, Suli Saro, who now is the leadership of the central area, who understands the, the economic um, disparities of our communities, of this diverse community. And so on behalf of uh, Centro Chad, our board of directors, who some of our directors are here today, thank you so much for joining us. And some of our honorary advisor uh, members, thank you here for being here. Um, and then, you know, I'd be remiss to recognize, of course, the leadership of our mayor, who always, you know, looks at our community um, through a lens of, of how do we make our community a better place for the diversity of of Long Beach. You know, we have such a diversity, which is a melting pot, one of the highest diverse cities in the nation. And it is very hard to provide that leadership and be fair. But I just want to also thank him for his leadership and um, the city uh, manager's office. I see John Kaiser back there from Economic Development. Whoop, whoop, John. We did it. And of course, um, our staff. You know, I have one of the hardest working staff in Long Beach. And I could say that because the you see them in and about around the city, you know, conducting outreach, engaging our community, uh, providing education, rapid response um, education for the COVID-19, getting people access to vaccinations, um, really targeting our young population, our workers and families and immigrants in our community. Um, you know, they are diligently working, helping to integrate our reentry population back to our communities. but. 
we we are we can't do this alone um, as an organization it definitely has been through a collaboration and a partnership and we are just so happy for um, our partnership to be with our city and with our state representatives and all of our community members here who we work in hand um, with addressing all the issues in our community. So thank you so much. We appreciate you all. And from the bottom of our heart, we're so excited. I could, I, I relate to what Sully said when I got that call from Lina as well. We were on a Los Amigos uh, policy meeting talking about the issues again, and I get a call from my state representative. And again, it, you know, it's, it, it's so impactful that it does bring us all to tears because it's been a long time coming for the work that we're doing in the city and it's a better time now more than ever because we have so much work with the economic recovery because we have a lot of families in need and really need that space um, to come and, and be able to get back on track and um, be um, economic stable in our community. So again, thank you, Lena, so much for your leadership and champion and uh, Mayor Garcia, and uh, Councilman Suli Saro, and all of our community partners. Thank you. Sorry, I uh, wasn't following the script. So I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Nicholas um, from the Children's Clinic, who's been a partner of Centro Cha for over 20 years as well. She's a mentor and a leader who I highly look up to and call her all the time for advice. Um, congratulations, Dr. Nicholas, so well deserved. And please um, welcome Dr. Nicholas from the Children's Clinic. Thank you, Jessica. It's been a pleasure to watch your organization grow and our organization grow and all our partners here through the years are, are so amazing. And um, I really want to thank Senator Gonzalez. Um, words can't express how much this means to us. I've been here 32 years. I've never gotten money from the state. Um, we've grown from 23 employees to 440, from one site to 13. We serve 140,000 low-income families of all ages in Long Beach. And um, this project is really a culmination of a dream of mine. Um, we knew that 90813 was the most impacted area in Long Beach for many, many years. Um, I used to look at the economic development reports. I'd sit in the library and I'd look at all the numbers that were trying to get the businesses to come and show how good everything was. No offense, Mayor, but, and, but I'd flip them. And I'd flip them instead of 90% of people are, you know, doing well, 10% are not. Um, we knew that this was the most impacted area. Um, and we knew that we needed to put our health centers and our clinics where the families were. So we have 7,000 patients that live within one mile of this site. And the site is like right over there on the other side of that very large building. It's that Anaheim and Walnut city block that was offered up for programs, I think now four or five years ago. It's been a long time. And we were looking to partner to really address the needs in the community. We'd already done care for the homeless. We're at the multi-service center at Century Villages of Cabrillo and have a mobile clinic. We are um, intentionally serving outpatient homeless patients in this community. I know others do, but we do it from the heart with doctors that went in and nurse practitioners into medicine to do that work. We knew that our families were becoming more and more crowded. Our home visiting programs could barely get through their homes because there are so many people sleeping on the floor and it breaks my heart. So we partnered with Bridge Housing. Um, it's been a long journey. We're very close now. Um, groundbreaking should be in September. We're going to have um, 88 units of affordable and supportive senior housing the affordable housing will be one, two, and three bedrooms, so families can live there. And in our wellness and health center, we're going to have 15 exam rooms for pediatrics, adult medicine, and prenatal care. We also are gonna have three dental operatories, a place for acupuncture, and really um, in a lot of behavioral health. Pacific Asian Counseling Services will be co-located with us to do the Cambodian population. We have been looking for Khmer speaking um, behavioral health practitioners, but there are not a lot of them, and we've been partnering with PACS for many years. Uh, Myron Kwan is the new CEO, and he's here somewhere, and his staff, Richard San, is also here, and his lovely wife, who heads Cambodia Town, Inc., 
and I thank them. We also have um, a lot of the wellness center is really my dream. Um, it is a large 8,000 square foot area with a 4,000 square foot courtyard. Um, we have like four stories ahead of above us. So we're going to try to do some container gardening in the courtyard with seedlings, but I'm hoping maybe the park will have a bigger garden that we can then send people to to plant their seedlings. So that's what my dream is, because we're only a block away. So we've already worked with the, library, the librarian, and our dream is to really be an important part of this triangle that can serve the community. Um, in the Wellness Center, we have flexible meeting space, and we're just so hoping that our partners will join us. We've had discussions with KGA, with Cambodia Town, Inc., um, with UCC. Um, we've had some peripheral discussions about the dance troupe. So we're really hoping that that space will be flexible and we're building it that way. That we will be doing some of our usual health education um, activities, but we will also be um, doing um, things with the community and really what the community wants. Um, I wanna thank my staff who are here. Just wave your hands. They're amazing. And our, and our board member, Jeremiah Rossborough, who is also a dad who takes his daughter to Dr. Schumer. And um, we're very lucky to have Charles Song and, and join us recently also. Um, and I really wanna thank the mayor. Thank you so much for all you do. And Sue Lee, I remember when we'd sit in a hotel bar and dream about what we were gonna do. <laughs> I wasn't drinking. It was building healthy communities early days. And we, sorry. I'm not a drinker really, but anyway, we would dream and we would listen to each other's lives and I would always learn. I love this diverse community. Um, it's in my heart. Um, I'm the granddaughter of immigrants. I, I really can feel for people that come with nothing, although we did not go through what many of our community members have gone through. Um, and, I, and I really wanna thank um, Lena again. I'm looking forward to meeting the new park director and thank you all. Um, so thank you. And come see our poster. I can, it's the smallest one, but I can show you everything on it and explain it. So um, I'm very honored to, I forgot to mention our partners, AOC7. We've had over four community meetings um, with different groups. And AOC7 has helped us in that. And UCC has gotten people together, Cambodia Town, Inc. We want the voices of the community. My, my architects are sick of hearing from me about that. My, it is my pleasure to introduce Rocio. Torres, who is the AOC7 and Friends of the Park. And we're just, we're so lucky to have them. And I'm, we are so humbled and so blessed and so fortunate to be doing this project. Look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. And please continue to wear your masks. And if you need anyone to talk to anyone about vaccines, many of you know I'm a doctor, but many don't. I'm a pediatrician with a degree in public health and I'm happy to try to talk to people. I won't judge. I will try to be understanding, but we really need to get people vaccinated. So thank you. Well, first of all, I do want to say welcome. Welcome to our park and uh, bienvenidos a todos a nuestro parque. So I, my name, like Dr. Nichols said, I, my name is Rocio Torres. I am a member of the Friends of MacArthur Park and a board member of ALC7 Neighborhood Group. I promised everyone I wasn't crying. I wasn't gonna cry, but I'm so emotional and I wanna thank everybody for being here. I am also a lifelong resident of 90813. This is the, the area that I grew up in and this is the area that I chose to stay in after I graduated with my master's degree. So coming to this park and ensuring that I was able to come with my siblings to pick up summer meals like all our students are doing now and make sure that the park was safe for me. That's what we wanna do here with Friends of MacArthur Park. Friends of MacArthur Park was created in 2017 to help improve the condition of the park in hopes of making a safer outdoor space for the community, especially our children. MacArthur Park is an important space for the residents of the sixth district, as everyone has mentioned, and many of who live in multi-family housing with limited outdoor spaces. For the past several years, Friends of MacArthur Park have been developing a vision plan for major improvements to our park. After months of advocating for funding and collaborating with stakeholders, in 2019, City Fabric and committee stakeholders work with residents to assess the park needs and assets, and as well as the physical condition of the park to create a master plan 
from our part. After weeks of meetings and community outreach, Friends of MacArthur Park went to City Hall with all our wonderful stakeholders and again advocated for our park, a park that has been neglected for over 40 years. But here we are today. Thank you so much. Thank you to the state of the California for the recent funding of $8.5 million to support the implementation of our <laughs> vision plan. Thank you to our neighbors and the, all the community stakeholders, AOC Save Neighborhood, Neighborhood Group, City Fabric, the Land Trust, Kamai Parents Association is here with us, um, United Cambodian Community, Senator Gonzalez, Sen uh, our Councilwoman Saro, and our Parks and Rec, fabulous Meredith uh, Reynolds. She has, all of these people helped us, and again, thank you for being here with us today, and thank you from the bottom of our heart, especially for our children. This is for our kids. I wanna introduce our amazing Brett Den Dennis. He is our, um, our Parks and Rec and Marine Department Director of City of Long Beach. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, Rocio. Well, um, what a better place to gather to celebrate uh, some significant investment in Central Long Beach. So I, uh, it was truly a heartwarming moment this morning when I finally got to meet in person Senator Lena Gonzalez. So we want to thank her again for everything. Thank you. So I'm reminded every Tuesday night when city council meets how important the vision and the leadership is of our mayor and also our council members. And it was mentioned earlier that she hit the ground running. I was so impressed when I first got to meet Councilwoman uh, Dr. Suli Saro of the high level view and vision and commitment to community engagement that she had and she maintains to this day. So I um, really appreciate that, to have advocates at the leadership level that understand how important parks are. And I think over the past year and a half, it's been clear how essential our parks and also our recreational opportunities are to a healthy fit uh, community. And as we gather today, uh, and I'm also a landscape architect, I'm reminded how important trees and shade. Most people are actually standing in the shade. So that's human nature, so that's really cool. Uh, also, you know, in terms of leadership, we have, a, we have a, a stellar Parks and Recreation Commission, and I think our commission chair, David Zanata, is here somewhere. I saw him earlier, but we appreciate his leadership and the advocacy that all of our commissioners have. The future is gonna be exciting for this very place. Uh, parks really do help build community and resiliency. Um, I'm gonna have a really great honor here uh, shortly to introduce you to what it's all about, but I also wanna pause because one of the truly significant partnerships within the city of Long Beach team is Parks, Recreation, and Marine and how we work effectively with our public works department. And Eric Lopez, who's one of my colleagues, he's here and he leads a really wonderful and very effective public works department. So Eric, I wanna give a shout out to you. Uh, so now I'm saving the best for last. I'm gonna ask if they could come forward what this is all about and it's about the future. But Miss Heather and the MacArthur Park youth ha actually have a special presentation they'd like to make to all of our leaders here today. So let's welcome up these kids, they're great kids. So they put their artistic talents to work and they've actually created some thank you cards for Senator Gonzalez and for Mayor Garcia and Councilwoman Sulisaro. We thank you for your leadership. And I guess Mr. L.A. Dodgers has one for me. So with that, thank you. But stay tuned, you're gonna see some wonderful things sprout from this landscape in MacArthur Park. And there's a glimpse of that uh, in terms of community engagement. We have some renderings on the easels over by Senator Gonzalez's uh, quarters. Uh, but again, it's all about building community and thank you very much for being here today. I'll turn it back over to the Senator, thank you.
now I'm officially going to cry because of this beautiful uh, Senator Gonzalez thank you card from these these wonderful kids who actually live in Central Long Beach. Thank you guys so so much. This this park is for you. So with that, we're going to turn over to these uh, these uh, billboards here, and we're going to take some pictures uh, with the checks, and we'll formally present to each uh, agency. Thank you so much for being here.